Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Welcome back everybody. I am so excited to be doing today's video and it's really just all about the things that I did to upgrade my life. I think what's really beautiful about life once you really figure it out is that you can really tailor it to your liking. You can implement different spiritual practices and try to do different mindset shifts to really figure out how to live best for yourself. And for me, it was all about how I can make my life simpler, more luxury, how I can feel like I'm actually working towards goals, and I kind of wanted to discuss with you guys the particular changes that I have made in my life that have made the world of a difference, more specifically in the past year. It's just certain things that I've done that have to do with like physical stuff, emotional stuff, mental stuff. We're gonna be touching on all subjects of career, love, friendships, mindset shifts, and all of the above. So if you guys wanna hear all about that, then please keep on watching. And for those who are new, I want to introduce myself. My name is Haley Gamba, and I love discussing all things women empowerment, self-care, self self love and really just glowing up as a woman. So if you like to hear stuff like that, then please subscribe down below. And for those who are returning subscribers, I love you so much. Let's elevate together and let's get into the points on how I upgraded my life this past year. Hey guys, I wanna to talk to you guys about today's sponsor, which is Parade. I was so excited when they offered to send me some goodies to show you guys and they wanted to sponsor today's video, which I'm so excited about. I got a couple cute pieces from them that I am so excited to show you. So essentially Parade is an amazing brand that makes great underwear and good quality lingerie pieces that you can wear under your clothes, around the house, during sexy time, or just in any way that makes you feel empowered and beautiful. And they sent me some really good stuff. I'm a black type of lingerie girl. So I got a lot of cute pieces. This one particularly, I like to wear to bed. I have been wearing it all the time if I wanna just feel sexy and beautiful in my skin, but it has this beautiful lace detailing. It's just wonderful. I also got this bralette, and I really want you guys to see the quality. It's such amazing quality. It's like double lined satin. It has like this like mesh detailing on the inside. It is just the most gorgeous little bra, and I, I love wearing this with like satin pajama pants, or honestly, just underneath a shirt that I know is see-through. It's nice to have pieces like this in your wardrobe just in case you have some see-through clothing or things that you just want to cover up, but I didn't want to wear like a structured bra that looks like a bra. I want to have something like that's more of like a bralette that's more dressier, so I love that. I also have this corset -y type of lingerie top right here. So cute, I'm obsessed. And by the way, guys, they sent me a thong. I have been wearing it religiously, but it's actually in the wash right now, but I will try to get you guys a picture of it if I can find it. But again, it goes with a lot of these pieces, so it's a black thong that goes nicely with all of these different types of tops. I also have this other lacy bralette. Again, a really beautiful detailed piece. You can tell they really put their time and effort into their designing process, and I just absolutely love this brand. You guys are going to be able to get the most gorgeous quality underwear, lingerie, night pieces, so definitely check out their website today. I will link it down below, and I will link all of the pieces that I got from them, even the ones I didn't show you guys here. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of the pieces. They are so cute, they are so innovative, and I'm obsessed with them. They can be worn in the house, underneath different clothing, as lingerie, or just when you're going to sleep by yourself and you just wanna feel good and beautiful in your skin. So thank you so much, Parade, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the rest of today's topic. Okay, the first one is really big for me, and this is something that I've definitely implemented more specifically in the past year, which is getting closer to my version of luxury. So I really want you guys to understand that to upgrade your life, life is all about doing things for you, making your life work in your favor, finding the peace, the balance, the simplicity, and the luxury of it all. So for me, I had to really understand what was luxury to me. My time, my peace, my days, my friendships, simplicity, balance, dating, like how can I really make that more luxury and go towards that? I think a lot of the times we are pushed to think one type of way or think that luxury means materialism or overconsumption. But a lot of the times it can really just be about how you spend your time, what you do in your free time, your it girl hobbies that make you feel good, the different types of ways that you like to rest and reset. So it's really just about what makes you feel luxurious, what makes you feel like you're pleased. And for me, I really wanted to get closer to that idea because I didn't want to obsess over things that just were not for 
me. I've talked about this in a lot of different videos about how I was spending a lot of my years living vicariously through others or allowing other people to be inspiration for me and realizing that what I once found to be inspiring, I no longer did. Not because there's anything wrong with it, but because it wasn't for me. And that is the beautiful part about adulthood, right? Like it's all about getting closer to what you enjoy. So if you're someone who has only lived one way your whole life and you move to a big city, and let's just say after two years, you realize it's just not for you, that is okay. You don't always have to be the person that moves somewhere thinking it's gonna work and then when you feel like it doesn't, you naturally just wanna lie and say it does because it's what you wanted. Adulthood, womanhood, and being grown, it's all about experiencing new things and figuring out what works for you. So I had to try a couple different things to figure out what was luxurious to me. And what I came to the conclusion of is that I love to buy certain things, but I am someone who really just enjoys my days. I wanna be someone who's able able to kind of do what I want in my day, go to the gym, call my friends, rest, spend time with my dogs, and have a little bit more of a free schedule. Of course, peace is really important to me. I find so much luxury in having peace in my life, so I don't like having a chaotic environment. I don't like having strife or drama. That is something that is so important to me. So I honestly like to just do things that give me that sensation of femininity and having a beautiful life. So whatever tickles my fancy, I'm gonna go towards. You can find a lot of peace and luxury in doing things to your home, fine dining with your friends and family, or even doing solo dates, having rest days like I discussed before and doing self-care during that time, manifesting and planning the future. My manifestation days are top tier. I'm obsessed with them. They are just like the most special, luxurious, fun day. I'll put on a cozy pair of pajamas, make myself a little charcuterie board, pour myself a mocktail and just relax and figure out what it is that I wanna do next in my following season. So for me, that is very luxurious. I also love attending a luxury gym. Like these are all things that I find to be luxurious. Getting my nails done, getting wax. Like sometimes it's really just about the little things, a little bit of materialism, a little bit about, you know, going out and glowing up, but also about the internal things that you can do that really just just let you tap into that feminine essence of enjoying the luxuries and pleasures of life. Okay, the second upgrade that I did for my life that really made the world of a difference was prioritizing my wellness and fitness routine, but more specifically changing it every season. This was something that I started doing this year that has really helped me not get bored of the intentionality behind my fitness and wellness journey. Now, as someone who has recently lost some weight, and you guys definitely have noticed that, and I've talked about it extensively on this channel, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't gonna get bored or uninspired of this journey. It was a little bit of a fear of mine in the beginning that I would revert back to old habits and get back into a routine that wasn't healthy for me. So the best way that I've managed to really stay on track is making sure that I change up my routine every season. So maybe in the spring, I will be doing weight training and then the summer hits and I'll be doing maybe a little bit of a heavier weight training mixed with Pilates. And then now that we're transitioning into fall, I am going to be grabbing gravitating more specifically to workout classes. I missed them, I can't wait to go back, so I'm gonna be taking bar and Pilates a lot more. And what this allows you to do is not get bored of your routine, it allows you to do different types of fitness journeys, and it also helps you set different goals for yourself. And for me, I also just love like the little materialistic things that come with switching my routine. So now that I'm getting back into bar and Pilates, that's a whole different outfit situation. Like I love to wear the cute little socks that you wear for Pilates and different types of outfits and just feeling like a pretty Pilates princess. So for me, I really just love the idea of prioritizing the gym and wellness in a way that allows me to not grow bored of it. And this has really upgraded my life in the best way to where I don't feel like I'm ever going to be someone who's gonna fall back into the habit of being lazy and not maintaining this particular part of my life. Okay, number three, and this was an upgrade that I did to change my life that helped me in the best way, which was I lived under my means, but more specifically, I changed the way I spend money. So this was a more of an upgrade that was all about glowing down and micromanaging my finances in a different way. So for me, a personal decision of mine was lowering the cost of living so that I can do things outside of just living that allows me to spend my money freely. So I really loved the idea of minimizing my cost of living and then maximizing my cost of experience.
experience. And this has upgraded my life in a way that has improved my mental health significantly. Now, obviously I don't know everybody's situation, but I can only speak to my own. So I'm gonna kind of share a little bit about what I mean. And I have talked about this in previous videos, but I kind of want to elaborate on it a little bit more. So for me, I was spending a lot of money on an apartment and on living. And I also was spending my money on things that I don't think were super conducive to a better version of me and of me living the life of my dreams. So what I did was getting this home was reducing my costs by over $2,000. It also allowed me to freely spend in ways that allows me to maximize my space in a way that feels more mine. Um, I'm not in survival mode, so it has improved my mental and emotional well-being, which has allowed me to work in a better way and optimize my work schedule. So now I actually make way more money than I did when I was living in my previous situation. And now I'm just in a way better predicament in my life. So essentially what I want you guys to take from this, if this is not your particular situation, is that you can change the way you spend money. If you're someone who's door dashing all the time or you're spending money aimlessly on things that you know for a fact is not an upgrade to your life, maybe move some things around, figure out where the issue is and try to spend money on things that will actually help grow you as a person. I have found that putting money towards things that make me feel better on the outside and on the inside has made me feel like a completely different woman. I feel more grown. I feel like I make better decisions. I feel like I'm able to really purchase things and know that I really am going to love it later on because I don't impulse buy anymore. I don't do things just to do it. I do it because it's intentional. And for me, it's all about intentionality. It's all about doing things for me and doing things for the best interest of my future. So. For me, buying this home was a huge investment for my life and has really allowed me to feel good in my decision-making skills. And also, under this umbrella, if you're someone who wants to upgrade your life and you don't know really where to start, maybe you're from a small town, you live in a city you don't love, or you live with your parents, there could be a multitude of things going on here. Maybe change your environment, your town, your home layout, your amenities. Figure out different things that you can shift around that maybe will improve your quality of living. A lot of the times it's not your life, it's where you're living, it's your environment, it's the people around you, it's a town, it's a city. You could feel uninspired and not creative. So for me, I changed my town, I changed my living situation, I made sure I reduced my cost of living, I maximized my space, I am spending more freely, and I ended up making way more money. So it's really just a beautiful domino effect that has led me to this point now where I feel super self-assured and happy in my decision. Okay, number four, when it pertains to upgrading your life is that I befriended more women and I also really understood what it meant to have friends that were low maintenance. So essentially befriending low maintenance friends, people that don't require a lot from me. And that's not to say that I'm being selfish or that I'm a bad friend. It's that I don't want to be a bad friend by over promising and under delivering. So for me, I have such a large group of friends from all walks of life. I am so grateful that I've met so many people along the way in my own journey. And I'm a big believer in befriending people and making new connections and growing and evolving as a woman, especially a single woman like myself. And a lot of the times we can feel very intimidated by the idea of making friends out of fear that it will take away from our own life. But I'm telling you, an upgrade to your life is creating boundaries around that and befriending people who are also low maintenance, people who also have demanding jobs, maybe possibly partners, other friends, people in their life that take a little bit more of their time. And this allows you to spread yourself in a way where you don't feel like you're under nurtured and you're over pouring. So for me, I am so big into pouring into each other's cup equally and having a reciprocal friendship. And when we are together, it's very intentional. It's very special. And we make a lot of amazing memories because my friendships are all about when we get together, we unpack, we unwind, we do girl time. We really just address a lot of the things in our life that we want to share with our girls. And for me, a baseline for my friendships has to be like similarities and morals and values and being able to understand one another and where they're at in their life. For me, I understand that some of my friends who are married or in relationships have a different expectation of me than maybe someone who isn't and just kind of being able to meet people halfway. But what I've realized that really works for me is everyone being pretty low maintenance. Like we contact each other just enough, we check in on each other, but we don't over bombard 
each other or expect too much from one another. And when we are together, we're able to put the phones aside, really just enjoy each other's company and be present. For me, life is all about being present and feeling like each moment shared with someone is a moment that I'm really enjoying. And how I'm going to kind of pour into my friendships leading into the fall is I'm gonna be hosting the girls here at my home. I'm thinking we're gonna do like maybe a TV show once every week or once every two weeks where we kind of get together, put on the show, the new episode, watch it together, kiki, have a charcuterie board, have a cocktail or two, and really just be able to enjoy our girl time. So for me, I love the intentionality behind that. I love being in my hosting era, and I love the idea of everybody from all different work schedules, from all different walks of life, being able to all decompress at my place and enjoy each other's company. So for me, it's all about intentionality, reciprocal friendships, and low maintenance in the way that actually benefits everyone. Okay, number five for upgrading my life, and this is kind of a simple one, but it's really not because it really has helped me a lot, and it's that I took better care of my mental and emotional health. Now, as someone who has always been an advocate for mental health and someone who's also been pretty in tune with it, I also wanted to be someone who held myself accountable when I was triggered, when I was angry, when I was feeling overwhelmed and stressed, so that I didn't crash out, burn out, or feel overwhelmed by my own life. So for me, I understood my triggers and what pushes me into depression. I had to understand when to take a step back, when to take a beat, when not to speak, when to rest, when to just kind of figure out what I wanted to do next. And that's kind of something that I'm really in tune with the past year. I don't like to be anywhere where I feel unhappy for a long time. So for me, I like to stay disciplined with certain routines because I'm aware of the domino effect that happens when I don't stay on top of my goals. So I try to not let my space get overly cluttered and chaotic because I will subconsciously feel less motivated and then eventually it will turn into depression and anxiety. So I try to stay grounded, I try to stay disciplined, but I also give myself the balance of rest and reset so that I know when to kind of take a step back, when to really reset, when to figure out when I need my time to just cool off. So that's really big for me. I also like to surround myself with people who feel like sunlight. I don't care if you're family, friends, acquaintances, random people. If you are someone who feels like you're draining me from everything I have and you're pulling me away from my happiness, I won't be around you, I don't care who you are. So I remove myself or I check in and see what is going on here and how can we fix this? If it's worth fixing and it's maybe a misunderstanding, let's address it. But if it's a personality issue and this person is unable of working on themselves and I'm unable on working on myself to better help the situation, we gotta part ways. Also not dating people who aren't good for me, removing myself early, this is huge guys. This is important for your mental and emotional health. If you are someone who's routine based, you're going to the gym, you have good friends, you have a good support system, you love yourself down, but you're still dating and sleeping with people who are not good for you, who are pulling you away from your happiness, you are not on top of yourself and you need to kind of check in with your self respect and ask yourself, why am I here? Why am I allowing this to be a part of my life and a part of my story? So that is something that I had to do and really check in with myself because that is the behavior of a high value woman. You can't just, you know, take different things out of the word and say, okay, well that's me, but then you forget about all the hard stuff. A part of healing and growing and evolving is checking in where you fall short. And for me, there was a time in my life where I would let people overstay their welcome a little bit too long. And also under that umbrella of mental and emotional health, I make sure that I'm doing my spiritual practices like praying and then also meditation, listening to positive people to stay grounded. This is a way that I stay in a good emotional space and have good mental clarity. So I make sure that I do that for myself every single week. Okay, number six is my commitment to self. Now, I remember whenever I would do words of the year, I would pick words like discipline, and this particular year, my word was unstoppable. What I really wanted to do was, instead of putting so much pressure on myself to evolve and grow, because a huge part of evolving and growing is also knowing when to just be present. I wanted to be a little bit more graceful with myself and treat the journey like it's a long run goal because my life is going to be long, God willing. I want to make sure that I prioritize a few things in my life that are about commitment to self with also giving myself grace. So acceptance, like do I accept my life? Am I happy? Is happiness at the forefront of my life? And success, that is what makes me happy as well. So success has to be under that umbrella and you need to be successful to live a good life. That's just the way 
way the cookie crumbles, whether you want to admit it or not. So for me, I tried to find ways to stay accountable and disciplined, but also, like I said before, prioritizing rest and reset. I want to find the balance between understanding that I'm growing and understanding that I need to still try and knowing that I'm trying and that I have the grit and I have the intelligence to keep going is all I really need. And for me, I like to just make sure that my commitment to self is trying to get under that acceptance, happiness, and success umbrella, and then I'll feel good. And that's something that I think is important. Even if it's a small win, it's still a win, okay? So also understanding to discern your own days and how to navigate them. So if you know you're having an uppity day, a good day, get as much stuff done as you can. And then if you're not having such a great day and you know that there's something going on with you, take a beat. It's totally okay. And getting organized with your thoughts, goals, and dreams so that you can better navigate them. Huge, huge, huge. Knowing yourself is knowing how to plan for yourself. Me, I need the organization. I need it written out. I need it scheduled. That's how I follow it. And that's what I know. So you need to know yourself to be committed to yourself. Number seven is podcasts and books. You want to upgrade your life. You want to upgrade yourself. You need to start reading and you need to start listening to positive podcasts and people who can help you expand your mind and expand as a woman. So for me, I am really big on learning and growing and getting more intelligent with age, getting wiser. I believe being a student of life is super important. So making sure that you're following people who keep you grounded, who make you feel good and who inspire you. And it also teaches you comprehension. There is a difference between listening and comprehending. A lot of the times people internalize things or hear something and hear it incorrectly because they don't understand the meaning of comprehension. This can all be learned with reading and and writing and learning and listening to things that you know for a fact are better. And for me, I am big on this. You have to understand yourself in order to grow. So something that I had to understand about myself is I used to be someone who would internalize something that was said if it applied to my life. That was me, you know, viewing it as an attack or viewing it as a statement that felt a little bit too familiar. Once you start comprehending and understanding that a lot of things are not necessarily directed towards you or should not be a trigger to you, you can figure yourself out better. There's so many beautiful things that can come out of reading and understanding and listening. So for me, it is just a big part of my life. And of course, I will list my favorite books that I've been reading recently and podcasts I've been listening to down below in the description box. I also think it's important to have a luxury at Girl Hobby. Reading is definitely one of them. And if you're someone who has a really difficult time reading, like myself, you can do audiobook style, okay? It's so good. Um, also, it's a great stress relieving outlet. I love it, I love it, I love it. And again, to upgrade your life is to understand your emotional and mental state. And for me, I need to relieve stress in order to feel good. And this is a great way for me to do it. I sometimes get a little overstimulated and a little bit too wired and crazy late at night. Reading grounds me and puts me to bed and allows me to relax and reset. And the last thing for upgrading my life, and this has a to do with dating is that I am going to stay a lover, but I am also a lever. And this is huge guys. And this is for all of my grown women who want to upgrade their life and they don't know how to start when it pertains to dating. You don't need to change yourself at all. You just need to change your mindset around being disrespected. I think a lot of us like to stay because we like to hold on to things that we want so bad, but being a lover and a lever is the best thing you can do for yourself in your dating life. I find dating to be fun. I will Will always be someone who's an advocate for dating. Now, of course, there are times in my life where I like to take a step back because I'm a little overwhelmed. I don't like to be a serial dater all year round. It's more of like a seasonal thing for me. Um, I tend to date mostly in the warmer months. I like to be outside more during the warmer months. So I was dating all summer long, but I wanna make sure that I'm accepting only good experiences that make me feel excited. That is an upgrade that was necessary for my mental health and for my self-respect. Being a high value woman is someone who understands that people should meet you where you meet yourself. If I am treating myself well, if I am pouring into myself well, and if I am doing certain practices in my own life, and so are my friends with my life, why would I allow someone to meet me with a bad experience? Now, when people see you living like that and see you taking care of yourself, you very rarely will be met with bad experiences. So a lot of people say, how do I encourage somebody to treat me good and take me on good dating experiences? 
try to figure out how your presentation can start representing that a little bit differently to that person. You don't need to explain to people that they should be better to you. They should just know based off of how you present yourself, okay? But also leave when you're not appreciated or respected. I am humble enough to know that I am not for everyone. That is okay, but I have to be able to discern when it's time for me to go and when it's time for me to step away when someone is not treating me the way that I deserve to be treated. So there's so many lessons within dating. There's so many things you can learn about yourself. I actually do not envy people who have not gotten the experience to date. And I'm not saying that they've lived a bad life. It's just, I am so grateful for my dating experiences, even the bad ones, because it's shown me over time what I want and what I do not want. So it's really big for me. Um, whoever I settle with, I will know is the one. And boundaries, self-respect, and passion in your purpose need to be a priority. So in your dating life, you need to make sure that you are making that extremely clear in your actions. You don't need to say it, but in your actions. So I'm a lover and a lever. I'm really good at it and I'm getting better at it. I think that it's something that takes a little bit of time. It takes grit, but the longer you stay in things that are not for you, the worse it will be for you. It's literally your life and you're the one that has to deal with it. So anytime that you think that you're getting your lick back or you're doing something, you are letting someone else take away your energy and your light. So for me, I refuse to let that happen and I'm really big on just being a, in a place that's happy and exciting and I'm being celebrated and not tolerated. These are all the upgrades that I've done to my life that have really changed the trajectory of my own situation. I have found that my life has definitely become more opulent, more elegant, more fun, more exciting, and understanding all of the lessons that life has taught me along the way, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. So hopefully these can actually inspire you and maybe help you make your own shifts. And yeah, guys, I really enjoyed this a lot. Let me know down below any other video ideas you guys have for me. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone. Mwah.